You know, we've had uh, nights where we've had multiple shootings or multiple major events, and that's really strained our resources. But honestly, this is unlike anything I've seen in my career. We begin with a violent and difficult weekend for many Portlanders tonight. Police say it is a make or break after that exceptionally tough day that included five shootings last night. Thank you for joining us here at 11 o'clock. I'm Galen Etlin. Now, officers say they were overwhelmed with calls as many serious crimes unfolded at once. Our Christelle Kumwe breaks down the chain of events. It was just a multitude of shots. Shots rang out early Saturday morning at Southeast Hawthorne Boulevard and 33rd Avenue, waking up Dylan, who lives in the neighborhood. I just got up and, and uh, first looked for my wife and um, and then wanted to know where she was at. She was at a nearby bar called Gold Dust Meridian as shots rang out. They were just sitting at the bar and um, and then sh shots started firing and uh, everybody hit the ground. Somebody next to her was uh, was was struck. One person was hospitalized with gunshot injuries. Police say it's unclear if the shooting happened inside or outside the bar, but a person who lives nearby saw people in two separate cars arguing just after the shooting. Seems like they were trying to get away. And then they sped off down 32nd place, but then another car was parked out there. About five people got in, and then they kind of sped away also. This is one of at least five shootings that Portland police responded to Friday evening into Saturday morning. Any one of these by themselves would be a big deal in my book. And to have them all happen in one evening was just absolutely remarkable. Police first got a call of shots fired at a protest convoy and counter demonstration on I-205 near the Gleason overpass around 7 p.m. Police found one bullet casing. No one was arrested or injured, but police say the investigation is ongoing. Just after midnight Saturday, police say two gunshot victims were found near a mini mart of Southeast Woodstock and 72nd. Both people are expected to be okay. About an hour later, police say another person was shot on Southeast 127th Avenue. That person is expected to be okay as well. Around 2 a.m., police responded to a shooting near Southeast Division and 141st Avenue. Two people were found dead in a suspected murder-suicide. Lastly, police responded to the Gold Dust Meridian Bar shooting. Again, at least one person was hit and is expected to survive. Police say another person was injured by shrapnel. In total, that's five separate shooting scenes, two people dead and at least five injured. Because of those shootings, Sergeant Kevin Allen with Portland Police says officers were only dispatched to high-priority calls, meaning those with serious life safety issues. It's really unusual for us to have the entire city on priority calls only. Property crimes or petty theft calls were put on the back burner. We have to get to a place where we have enough resources so that we can address nights like this, as tragic as they are. Um, you know, we need to have enough cops to respond to them. Now, as we mentioned, there are a whole lot more things going on that put a strain on police resources overnight, including multiple deadly crashes. To learn more about the timeline, you can head over to KGW.com or check out our 5 p.m. show uploaded from today to YouTube. Now, speaking of those deadly crashes, Portland police are sharing some more statistics about how dangerous the roads are this year. The latest crash, this one right here, was this afternoon near North Columbia Boulevard and Peninsular Avenue. It was the 21st deadly crash in 2022. Officers responding to the Kenton neighborhood there found that two vehicles collided. One person was pronounced dead at the scene and two adults and three children were taken to the hospital. We have not heard how they are doing. A Portland man who has devoted his life to coaching youth basketball needs some support tonight. Earl Cheney had a heart attack a few weeks ago and is now back to coaching luckily, but he faces some steep bills. Art Edwards joins us now with how he's getting a boost from his players, Art. Galen coach Earl Cheney is well known for helping out young athletes and now that he needs some help, some people with those families of the kids that he coaches, they're working together and coming through for him. Inside the gym at the Matt Dishman Community Center in Northeast Portland, the Beatty basketball team is on the floor. On this day, nearly two dozen young players, all under the watchful eyes of Earl Cheney, the man they all call Coach Earl. Coach Earl is awesome. I just love the community too. It's really, really fun just to be here and play. 
I think he's better than any other coach. Coach Earl has been coaching youth basketball for 40 years. Some of the players have gone on to play college ball and even to the NBA. He doesn't like to talk about who he's coached or his success. He has a different focus. Just to see the joy of the kids and the joy on their face. He grew up in this neighborhood, played here as a youngster, and he's devoted his life to the game. You know, he just commands so much respect from the kids and he's so good with them and uh, he's just a very, very kind man. But a couple of weeks ago, Coach Earl had a heart attack. He's back coaching, but he's been through two hospital stays, missed time at work, and the hospital bills threaten to become overwhelming. He's part of our family. We end all of our phone calls with I love you, Jackson calls him grandpa. I mean, he's, he's in our family, he's in our tribe. So Megan Wallstatter started a GoFundMe page to help the man who has given so much to her family and others in Portland. My wife and I always say that everybody should have a coach Earl in their lives. The players in the Biddy basketball class fly around the court at the Matt Dishman Community Center. Coach Earl is right there to offer tips and encouragement. These kids are having a great time, and hearing of Coach Earl's medical challenge got their attention. My heart dropped when I heard. I was like, like super scared, and I was really afraid, and I'm happy to see him out here now. I'm happy to be one of those families that actually gets to help him back. So how is Coach Earl doing? I'm feeling much better, thanks for asking. While he is feeling much better, Coach Earl does have some more tests that he's going to have to go through and also some treatment. If you'd like to contribute to the GoFundMe that's been set up, we have a link on our webpage at KGW.com. Thankful to see that he's doing well and that people are reaching out to help. Art, thank you. A special art exhibit at Portland State is closing, but before it did, there was a celebration of the artists inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement. Philanthropist Jordan Schnitzer gave $2,500 grants to each artist there to produce these works that you see right now. Recipients ranged from PSU students to other artists who have lived in the community for years. It was part of a diverse collection reflecting upon social justice issues and systemic racism. What all these artists saying, that's unique to each of us. They're talking about their legacy, their history, issues that they've confronted, and they speak to us in our own way. We've got perspective from the artists on our website if you want to check that out. And more than 100 community events brought thousands of people in to see the exhibit over time.